Hi guys, welcome back to Milmo Wood from beautiful North Wales. It's a crisp autumn morning this morning and I've decided it's time for us to be making another video. Uh, I'm going to make end grain chopping boards. It's nearly Christmas and I think they'll make great gifts for family and friends. I've got some uh, lovely birch that I bought from a local mill. I've already jointed one side and then put it through the thicknesser. So I've got uh, multiple lengths all planed on one side or jointed on one side. I haven't jointed the ends. I thought I'd try something different rather than put them through the jointer machine. I'm going to try and join it on the table saw from a video I saw from 731 Woodworking. Um, great channel, check him out. Um, I hope you enjoy the video and if you do please consider subscribing or hitting those like buttons, giving it a big thumbs up, even the bell so that you don't miss my next video. And I'd be grateful if you'd share it with family and friends or like-minded people who may join me as well. It's only a very small channel, but it's growing. I'm really excited. I'm only nine subscribers short of the 300 mark, which is amazing for a little channel here in North Wales. Anyway, thanks guys. Let's get on with the video and make some beautiful end grain, end grain chopping boards. Cheers. Okay, it's a bit windy here. I hope you can hear me properly because I'm just outside my workshop which is where I do most of my table saw work. Um, I've currently got a fine cut blade, a cross cut blade on. I'm going to change that to a ripping blade. Uh, less teeth, it cuts easier through the wood. So before we get started, let's change this blade over. So my saw is just a point of removing this bolt here and then we can fit the new, uh, the new blade in. These bolts are never very tight, they don't need to be. They're just a little pinch to get them out. There's a little fix in place. Out comes the blade. Very quickly we can uh, replace it, but make sure that you follow the direction of the arrow correctly. There's a little location pin on this. Let's tighten the bolts up. Again, not, not too tight. And put the uh, plate back on. Okay, so the method we saw for jointing on the edge that I'm going to try and replicate uses a metal spirit wheel which goes against the fence so I'm just going to close the fence up to the blade and then I'm going to bring take these away and bring the fence in a couple of millimeters I'm happy with the distance of the wood and the blade. Now the only thing to note is that the wood, this edge of the wood, the unjointed edge, needs to be flat on the level right the way down its length before you cut. I'm happy with that. So I'm really pleased with how it works. I just need to take a little bit extra off. It's not quite jointed all the way along. I'm 
really pleased with that. And then flip the wood over and cut the other side. Again, bring the fence up to measure against the blade. And then I'm just going to bring it in a couple of millimeters again and cut the opposite side. Jointed all the edges now, I just need to rip the buzz to thickness. Probably cut these an inch and a half wide, or what's that, 75, um, sorry, about 32 millimeters. Um, but you can adjust that to suit yourself. My little shop helper, Dorothy. <laughs> Hello, Dorothy. Okay, I've cut all the battens, and I've made sure when I cut them, that I've laid them down with the cut edge horizontal, if you like, to the opposite sides, and the uncut edge to the top. So they're all laid exactly the same direction. And now we need to get to some gluing. Tell me, Dorothy, what do you reckon? Eh? Let's glue some wood. Now we've got the battens, that's brilliant. Uh, just need to sort them out a bit more. I know some of the wood had split at the ends. So there's a split at the end there. So I'm gonna spin any damaged end towards me so that they're all facing the same way. Let's get a bit of damage on it. And then the next thing we need to do is, albeit this is all the same species of wood, there is a definite difference in the colour as you can see. So we could either put all light colours together, or we could fashion it in such a way so that we get a little pattern before we glue them together. So I quite like the idea of the little pattern, so I'm just going to alternate these. And once we're comfortable with that, we can start gluing. I think I'm going to play a little bit more, but I'll do that off camera. The other thing to consider for me is the, thick, uh, the width of my uh, planer, or thicknesser, um, because I want the wood to pass through this after I've glued it together to make sure it's absolutely level. So the sections that I glue together will be the width of this. And then I know I can get them through. The width of this or slightly smaller. I've got the final arrangements of my battens now, how I'm going to glue them up. Um, and before I glue them up, I'm going to prepare uh, other sections of wood that I can clamp onto these to make sure that they don't come out of alignment when gluing them together. And I'm going to use the offcuts. Nice hardwood, I know the flat. Um, and these will go across these sections when they're gluing together just to make sure that there's no bow or, or movement in the wood. But I don't want these gluing onto the squeeze out so I'm going to put some packing tape along one edge. More it will become more obvious when uh, when we do the clamping. And now for the glue up. Make sure that you glue in the edge uh, that you want. So the glue I'm using is Type Bond 3. I've used this before on the chopping board. It's waterproof, 
but it's also more importantly it's food safe as well so that's the real choice for me so I've put some tight bond into an old container uh, I'm going to use a normal paintbrush which isn't ideal uh, you can get paint brushes latex brushes for this um, you could use your finger I guess and then we're going to put glue on Now from experience, what I've found is you need to put plenty of glue on and just clean the squeeze out afterwards. Otherwise, what I have found is that the wood just doesn't stick properly. And the last thing you want is for your wood not to have stuck properly. I shouldn't have put glue on that last one, so I'm just I'm going to swap that over with a similar coloured piece of wood out of this section here. And that one doing. And then I'm just going to repeat that with these. Now we're ready to clamp. I think what I'll do, because I want to clamp these all together, is I'm just going to get another strip of wood in between, covered in tape, so that I can clamp them all in one go. Now I find that quick release clamps like these just don't have enough pressure for what we need to do. I haven't got any parallel clamps at the moment, they're rather expensive and I haven't um, purchased any just yet, something I need to do in the future. Um, so I've got some big bar clamps that I'm going to use. Unfortunately they're that big, I don't really have much room in my garage to do it with, so I'm just going to have to take these outside. Well, it took a bit of messing about, but we've got there eventually. I'll leave those to dry overnight. Okay, it's the following morning now. Moment of truth. Let's start taking these out of the clamps. So the sticky tape that I put on these to stop them from uh, gluing to the wood has worked. So that's always good. And now to release them from the main clamps. I put cell, uh, sticky tape on to prevent each section from gluing together as worked as well. So I'm really pleased with that. I'm just going to clean the worst of the glue up uh, with the chisel. Okay, now to put them through the thicknesser just to clean each side off. I found that each one had a level side, which is good, save me putting them on the jointer. Um, and we're just going to slowly skim the top until we get them level flip them over and skim the other side and what I'm going to do if you remember correctly we align the wood so any damage that was on the battens was at one end which happens to be this side of the wood I'm going to stick it so that the the end with the damage or the cracks trails through the planer so it's last bit through the planer or thicknesser and in that way if there's any snipe it's on the end that's going to be disposed of anyway nicely cleaned up now and you can tell the different colours of the wood so I'm really happy with that looking very nice 
I've now changed the blade to a cross cutting blade, much finer blade. I put my cross cut sled uh, attachment onto my table saw. I've set my fangs to 35 millimeters, about an inch and a half, uh, with a view that we'll probably have to mill down for, for it through the thicknesser and lose a couple of millimeters on the finished item. And now to cut all these across the grain. All the sections cut now, ready for the next stage of the glue up. I've uh, flipped the wood over from the long grain to the end grain. Uh, this is how big my board's going to be. I still need to glue this one up. But here's one that I glued up yesterday. Uh, you can see the squeeze out from the glue uh, that needs planing down again to be finished. Um, just be mindful that, just to reiterate, it's as big as it will fit through my thickness planer at the moment. I want it to be a little bit bigger. So we're going to add some more onto the end of that. But we need to glue, glue these up now. These are going to be glued in exactly the same way as we glued them earlier to be the long grain. I just need to flip them all over, add glue onto this surface, and then put them into the clamp. You've already seen that uh, done earlier, so I won't show you that again. Right. We've now got uh, three sections of wood glued together. Uh, the glue up's not gone as well as I would have liked. There's some areas um, where there's a gap in the wood. Uh, I'll have to see what I'll do with that later. I may use some resin just to close those cracks up or may cut them away. The process I'm using is a bit long-winded and as I explained at the beginning of the video, that's because of the restriction I have in my thickness planer. Um, it's only, I think, 13 inches wide and I want these boards to be wider than the 13 inches. Um, so what I'm going to do now though just plane these down, put them through the thickness planer so make sure they're all the same. I'm going to joint one edge and glue one section to the other section. It'll become more obvious as we go along with the video. It could be that you glue them as one unit. That's probably the best way to do it if you've got a, a big enough joint or, or thicknesser. Uh, or you could also spend the time sanding it down. But this is quite hard wood. It'll take a while to sand down. Um, a little bit of an experiment. Let's see how it goes. Before I put it through the thicknesser, I've got a known flat piece of wood. There's no rocking on this section, so that's the direction I'm going to feed it through the thicknesser. I'm going to check that on all these. If there's any rocking, I'll wedge it onto this flat piece of wood and use that to go through the thickness planer. So with the thickness planer with them. <laughs> Okay, let's see how we get on anyway. I'm really pleased how those have come through actually. There's a little bit of snipe on the end, which could have been avoided if I sent a piece of scrap wood through. But we are actually going to trim these down on the table saw to make sure they're square. Uh, also going to round the edges off. I think they look beautiful. And once they're oiled, glued together, they'll be excellent. Well, we're coming to the final stages now. It's getting quite exciting. Uh, we've got all the pieces glued together that we were able to fit through the thickness uh, planer. And now to trim the edges and put the final pieces together. That means it's time for A Milmo Wood Top Tip. Milmo Wood Top Tip. A Milmo Wood Top Tip. <laughs> now imagine we're putting these two pieces through the table saw to join this edge, or even on a jointer to join this edge. And if I was to Put these two pieces of wood on the end, 
Just imagine these as the end grain of that wood after they've been cut. I've cut these exaggerated angles on these woods. Again, assuming these are the end of the boards that we've cut. And the assumption is that the table saw blade isn't quite set at the perfect 90 degree angle, or your jointer isn't quite set at the perfect 90 degree angle. And what you've got it's a slight off cut from 90 degrees. Of course, when you join the wood together and squeeze it tightly in the clamp, now remembering this is exaggerated, you double the error in the cut. And by doubling it, I mean you've got the same error on the right hand side and the same error on the left hand side you butt them up, you double the error, and you get this cup in the wood. However, if you was to flip one side, and then butt the joints up, you get the perfect 90 degree joint, even though you got an error in your cut. I learned this tip of the Bourbon Moth uh, channel I love that channel, he's a great woodworker. I thought I'd share it with you. It's something that when you see it like this, someone presenting it, it's really obvious. But I would never have thought of that on my own. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure that I flip one piece of wood when I cut the edge. Top tip. I'm going to join the sides now exactly the same way that I did at the beginning of the video. I'm not 100% sure on this method yet, but I'm going to carry on using it anyway for this video. Uh, I'll need to set my level and then my wood against it and join this edge. I'll repeat that on all three pieces. Now for the final glue up, I've got the wood in the orientation that I want, um, I've decided I'm going to glue all three pieces together. I actually want two boards, so when I finish I'll cut it uh, in half to get, generate the two boards. But while I'm gluing I might as well glue everything together rather than gluing twice. I've got the pattern I'm happy with, I've got the joints I'm happy with. What I have learnt though from earlier in the video, uh, where I got glue everywhere on, on what is my workbench, I bought a silicon uh, sheet so that the glue doesn't stick to anything. And I'm also going to glue on top of a known flat surface, which is 12 mil plywood. That should just help me get it together. The other tip that I had, what I tried to do previously was move it as it is. Um, what I do now is gluing it here. I think this is more because I've got a, a really small workshop. If you've got a bigger workshop, you can obviously get your clamps here and clamp it as, as you want to straight away. I'm just going to clamp it in place here temporarily before I put them in the big clamps and exert uh, more pressure on it. And albeit this glue isn't a quick drying glue, um, it's probably best done as fast as you can. So I've got a nicely jointed edge on this board. I want them as flat as possible on the joint so that we don't have too much sand in afterwards. I'm going to put the temporary clamp on. I might actually put two on so it doesn't slip while I'm moving. I'm going to move these now into the bigger clamps. Okay, now to cut the board down to final size. Well, final outcome of all that work is two nice sized chopping boards, or cutting boards really I guess. 
um, small amounts of waste, which will get used up. And I managed to make uh, what will be a trivet. Trivet? Trivet, I say. Um, nice. The only thing left to do now is sand them down. I'm going to start off on quite coarse grit, probably 40 or 60 grit, and then go right down to 240, 180, 240 grit. Uh, in between sanding, I'll wet the surface. And wetting the surface brings up more of the more of the uh, fibres from the wood, so you get it extra smooth. Chamfer it with a router, and then we're up for oiling. I'll go through some of that with you. I won't show you the sanding. Um, I may just show you what I use to router them. Some people I know use a 45 degree edge, which looks really nice and quite modern. Um, for these, though, which are more traditional, well, I believe look like a more traditional board. I'm just going to round the edges off slightly, um, corners as well, and we'll get to that later. By the way, if you're enjoying the video, sorry to say it again, but please subscribe and give it the thumbs up, it really helps me. A tiny little channel here in North Wales. I started the channel just for my own interest really, to, to keep a record of what I was making, and now it's becoming hmm, kind of popular which is great for me, I'm really excited about it and as I'm due to come into retirement in the next few years maybe it's a great hobby to keep on doing. I'd love to have some of your comments below, uh, please give me some feedback, I'd be really grateful. Anyway, enough talking, we'll crack on and, and get some sand in done. Well it's the next day now, um, I've sanded the chopping boards, I started at 80 grit. I worked my way down to 180 grit, I soaked the board overnight and I've just sanded down again at 240 grit, so the boards are looking nice, feel gorgeous, um, and I've rounded the edge over with a handheld router, I used a small round over bit with the bearing as the guide, but this is the bit that I used in my quarter inch router, I set it just to give a very small round over on the edge of the board and use the bearing as the guide also rounding over the corners well it's time to start oiling the boards um, you need something for the boards to rest on while you're oiling them you can do both sides at the same time and what I use is just these homemade uh, points for the boards to sit on just scrap plywood with some screws put through. Now these are quite sharp actually, so you could probably dull the end off a bit. Uh, I know you can buy purpose made ones. I also have these bench dog uh, pads, which come with a painting spike that clip on, which you can use. But the homemade ones work really well for me. I've used them on quite a few projects and never had a problem. I'm going to use pure tongue oil. Don't get mixed up with some oils where they uh, claim to be tongue oil, but there might be a mix. This is pure tongue oil, which is food safe. Uh, mineral oil is probably a good one as well. If you're selling commercially, probably mineral oil, because um, tongue oil is made from a tongue nut and might cause some allergies to people with a nut allergy. So just bear that in mind which oil you use. These are for family members for Christmas and I know tongue oil is going to be fine. Now this is the moment I love. The project's nearly finished. We get to add the oil and watch the color of the wood pop. Can't wait. Now the manufacturers advise applying this with a brush, but I'm just going to use my hands with some gloves on. Just gonna pour some onto the surface. Some people actually soak the boards in a plastic container uh, holding the oil. Um, it's not what I do. And then as the oil gets absorbed into the wood, you can just see the colours coming through. Now look at the difference. Absolutely beautiful. I 
when you've coated it, obviously the oil gets absorbed in and you'll see areas drying out. Um, I normally like to put two or three coats on like the, like the company advises. Um, and this, this top oil will just be absorbed right into the material. You don't want to leave it pooling, so make sure it's not pooling on the surface. Um, if it is, take it off or wipe it off with a rag. I'll continue now and finish all sides. Okay, I've finished oiling now. So that's all the pieces ready. I've just got to leave that to soak in. If, you, if I just show you this piece, you can see already that the oil has soaked right into the wood in some areas. You can continue on applying if you wish to uh, until those areas soak it all up. Uh, but I'm gonna leave those at the moment and then come back probably tomorrow morning, maybe late tonight, and add the extra coat.